So the theme song for No Ordinary Sheila is super catchy. Where did the idea to create it come from? The idea to create a song was, has often been in the back of my mind, especially since I've known Andrew London and his wonderful trio. But this also was given added impetus by uh, Kim Hill when we did the recording for the conversation between Kim and Sheila, asking us, uh, you know, had we got a title? And she came up with No Ordinary Sheila. So that was it. And of course, it's a good title for a song. And Andrew did a fantastic job and we co-wrote the lyrics together and he wrote the beautiful music and uh, yes it is it is very catchy and people love it. So how did Sheila react when she first saw the film? She, as I recall, she said to us, um, you've done me proud. And she has lots of hobbies in her profession so tell us about a hobby of yours. Can I answer that one? <laughs> <laughs> one of my hobbies is gardening and um, and so I'm very interested in plants of all kinds, and including native plants. And Sheila, of course, has illustrated uh, two or three gardening books, other people's gardening books, a beautiful book called Gardening with Wings, that includes bird illustrations as well. So that's how I, um, one of the first books that Sheila was involved in that I saw. And yes, I follow her nature and trace generally, so that's one of my hobbies that fits in with hers. And my hobby is my life, <laughs> making films <laughs> and going to see them. So what is your most memorable experience at a film festival, Hugh? Well, it's got to be something quite recent. That was the premiere of Do and Sheila at the Te Papa and the Soundings Theatre. We were hoping to get Sheila along for the night, but she needed oxygen and we couldn't get the facilities and the nurse that we needed. So instead of that, Christine came up with the idea of getting Julian uh, Raphael, the choir conductor of the sea shanty, and get him to raise the audience in a rousing chorus of for She's a Jolly Good Sheila, which they did with great gusto, energy and enthusiasm and warm friendship towards Sheila. And gave her three hearty cheers at the end. Right. Yes, now Sheila likes mutton bird, it's a delicacy for her, Hugh. Have you tried it and do you like it? What's it like? Well, first of all, it smells like um, the kitchen directly above hell. <laughs> well, it's, uh, well you, you have to actually salted mutton birds, you've got, got to cook them three times and throw the water out and each time they get less oily and less uh, salty. And then after that they are, as Mariah puts it on film, uh, a delicacy. It's a delicacy, delicacy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes, they are. Yeah. Sheila's knowledge of things along the coastline, be it flora or fauna, is amazing. I mean, you don't just know plant and animals from reading or learning. You seem to know them because they belong to you and you share them. You write so well with such clarity and such enthusiasm. A lot of people don't. You write as you speak, I think. That's a picture. Oh, one, two, oh, one, two, three, four. You lived as it's described without car, television, alcohol, cigarettes, or shag pile carpet. We had a good life. <laughs> they said no, that's it. But do come in, have a cup of tea with us, and we'll talk it over. My mother's told them to go to hell. How many books now? Sort of between 30 and 40, I think. Good Lord. I see something that interests me, down it goes. One of the things that really intrigues me about the book is the way that the two halves of the manuscript came together. I have been chided in my time for not using scientific or stately language. It's just not in me. I can't be formal. If anyone came along and said, 
nor going into a nursing home, I would push off in my little boat on an offshore wind.